All right, for Dizzy's on Mad Men, yeah, I can't talk. <laughs> A blooper from Dizzy. Hey everybody, welcome to Lions Pride Tavern podcast number 90. Tonight we find out how we didn't do in this weekend's continuous raid of Antares the Burning Throne. <laughs> subtle. No. <laughs> now we feel all bad. <laughs> and we have some more news about the, well, we won't get into that. But before all that, let's start off with introductions. I'm your host, Fafford. I play a Dwarven Beastmaster Hunter in the awesome game, World of Warcraft. Next up is Dizzy. Hi, I'm Dizzy. I play a human Beastmaster Hunter. And Lorelei. Hi, it's Lorelei. You're a Night Elf Fury Arms Warrior because I can't make up my mind. <laughs> and you're more than you're in your rights to be whatever you want to be. <laughs> <laughs> and a pistol up north. I play a pistol, a Drenai, protection, just protection, Pally. And we don't have Charity again tonight. She's uh, missing in action. So we will just continue without her. So, um, yeah, as you can tell by the introduction, <laughs> Dizzy, why don't you cap us off on how well we did this weekend? Well, seeing as the doldrums of summer has hit, we had one of those day weekends. <laughs> yeah. We Friday we went in and cleared trash up to Agrimar, and then we wiped on Agrimar, and then we wiped on Agrimar, and then we wiped on Agrimar, <laughs> and we did that the whole night. And Ooh. on honestly, a positive note, we did get Garothi down. Hey. I don't really count Garathi as he is more just like really big trash at this point. <laughs> kind of a hiccup. Hey, we had we had to take our our wins where we can get them. Right. We That's killed true. trash. <laughs> yeah. And we we spent most of the night wiping on Agrimar, and from what I could tell, it was something different every time. But we seem to be making progress with the the new players calling the fight and swapping we were very short on cc's on friday so i think that was also a problem we didn't have any backup yeah that had a lot i think that had a lot to do with it and then as the night came to a close uh, a few of us opted to after the end of normal raid try to pug through agamar so we got the lockout for argus and shenanigans ensued. I won't go into it too much, <laughs> but for those of you that find yourselves pug raiding, there is a better world. Find a guild. Find a team. It's it's really not that bad. <laughs> Pugging is the worst. <laughs> and that's all I'm going to say about that. Okay. We might come back to it. <laughs> Saturday morning, Mirama managed to pug into a group and got us to lock out about an hour before raid Saturday. So Saturday, we started off on Argus. And yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what? It was just like Agrimar. We, we, we kept consistently getting through the first phase, but we were consistently having three to five people not make it through and then the second phase will go smoothly and we get to the third phase with the ads and we do pretty well pretty well <laughs> and then we get to the fourth phase and people would stand in swirlies and ads would get missed and mistakes would happen and the tree would die and on and on and on and yay we didn't get our guest down this week Close, though. Yes, we came close quite a few times. 
but close only counts in horseshoes, hand grenades, and tactical nukes. <laughs> well, 3% is pretty close. I mean, I think it should, should should have died after that. You know, the Hots should have done it. Would just roll over and nice. play dead for us. Yeah. yeah. You know, just say, you know what, you guys, you, you've worked on us, uh, what, nine times? <laughs> You tried to kill me tonight. I- I'm just gonna die for you. That's that's good enough for me. But and I have a theory about it too. But I don't know if you guys will subscribe to my theory. And what's that? I feel like because we got it down before, <laughs> there was a little bit of overconfidence and mistakes were happening. Um, it, that's possible. I, I I will not discount it. But as I say always, it's usually raid makeup um i really do think that's what it was we were a little shy on dps if we would had that one more dps or that was a high-end dps i believe when we got it down uh to three percent we would have got it i think we had had enough it's possible but i feel like if we could have had people staying alive for the first phase we it would have made everything a lot easier and we would have had more time in the fourth phase yeah, but I don't know if time was what we needed, you know what I mean? Because I know on our best poll, which was our second to the last poll, poll number eight, because, well, the first poll really didn't count. It only lasted 40 seconds. I don't know what happened there. I wasn't there when it happened. <laughs> but that was, yeah, mistake number one. I think that started our night off. But uh, with the eighth poll, I mean, that was pretty good poll. I thought we had it, and then it was just like, bang, bang, bang. Everybody's, you know, the last few people just started going down, and, you know, I mean, three well, percent still a lot point, of HP. People are getting tired too. Oh yeah, yeah. But yeah. So I mean, because we kept getting better at things. I mean, we we actually had most everybody was doing really well with the soul blights in phase one. I think that toward the end of the night that got really really good yeah there was one poll we actually ended up with everybody alive through that phase yeah that was the good yeah and then that yeah each phase kept kept doing really well and i'm like oh my god we're gonna get it we're gonna get it and i think maybe that was the three percent one it was (laughs) yeah i I didn't want to mention that as it was happening because i didn't want to jinx us during the fight So yeah, I'm, I didn't want to, I didn't want to distract us. I thought everyone's everyone's focusing, doing what they need to do. Yay, we're alive! But let's keep at it. Yeah. Well, you know, both of these bosses, Agrimar is actually, I believe, tougher than Argus, in my opinion. Um, maybe once we worked more on it, but I don't know. I still think it's a tougher fight than Argus. Well, I think they're they're it's tougher, but for a different reason. Yeah, Agr- Agrimar is all about coordination and and really the raid leader um, coordinating everything. Whereas Argus, it's a lot of personal responsibility. Yeah, I'd agree with that. But, you know, they're both, they're still, I mean, we've only downed Argus once. So it's not like we're an expert at it. This is our progression boss. And technically Argus is too, because it's so tough. You know, I have, a, and we, you know, our raid composition from Friday to Saturday changes uh, so much. You know, there are people that can play on Saturday, but not on Friday. Same thing, Friday can't play on Saturday. So we have to adjust there. And it's like you said, you know, on, on Agrimar, we didn't have all of the, you know, the. Um... We, had, we had what, five CCers and one backup? Yeah. Real, and usually we have like three or four backups. So, yeah. And and then Mirama, bless her heart, she stepped up. I'm glad she did. And she's the one that was releasing all those little fire things. And, uh, yeah, you know, I don't know if she's done it before, but she did a pretty good job. Better than I did. Actually, she had spoken to me after her pug on Saturday to get through that fight, and we have a possible new strategy that we need to discuss with the tanks. Yes. Mm, that sounds like it's a lot easier than how we're doing it. Mommy was telling yeah. me about it, so... Yeah. I'm down with easier. Speak about it. Yeah. I, I think I should speak about it after, you know, yeah, before we'll, next raid. Yeah, let's. we'll give it a shot. I mean, 
we so what we ended up doing at the very end to raise our spirits is we went on to fell hounds and took down fell hounds <laughs> <laughs> that was well, my reasoning for doing it the real okay. reason was so we don't have to do trash up to our agrimar next week <laughs> or argus next week yeah because we have the lockout already passed yeah agrimar. we have a lockout <laughs> so we're just going to spend friday and saturday on argus but we're going to get really good at it that's my prediction <laughs> oh, we'll get it. We'll yeah, get it. Yeah, we'll get it. I I have confidence in this group. This is, I mean, it's a good raid team. It we just learn a little slower than most, I think, because you know I don't know why. I mean, we've we've postulated on this before, where it's people not doing their homework, you know, that kind of stuff. But I don't think it's that. I think it's just a rhythm issue. You know, once we get our rhythm, then we do pretty well. Could be, but I think when we have a changeover, like a change in composition, so we have a different combination, uh, a different hat people have to step up to take a primary role, like as DPS, um, and uh, you get some people who might be heavier hitters, both in terms of what they are capable of doing, uh, ad management or avoiding damage, uh, and we rely on those uh, those heavy hitters who've got more practice and those who haven't had as much practice for whatever reason. I, I think our proportions kind of shifted a little bit, so we've had a few more uh, of the learners and a few less of the veterans. And I think that's part of why we're slowing down at this point or why we've slowed down. It does feel, and I, I'd agree with Lorelai, we're, we're catching up now. Um, and so bit by bit, you know, all those people are now stepping up, learning the roles, getting better at it. Yeah, I would have to agree. And with our raid comp changing so much, you can't really get a rhythm and just know the fight every time. Yeah, if we had the same people all the time, I mean, every single, you know, time, mm -hmm. we would be ahead of the curve, I think, really. Oh, yeah. But We'd... that being said, I've been in previous raid teams where it was the same 20 of us for like three four years straight and it, it's it's a different world and i'm kind of glad to not be in that stressful environment anymore yes that's what i would call it is very stressful if anybody's ever done it they know exactly what we're talking about um there's there's lots of drama in raid teams like that because I mean, anytime you create a team, I mean, you know, Dizzy and I are both ex-military. It's a little easier for us because we're all the military people are trained the same way. So we have a bond for teamwork. But when you get, and I hate saying this, but when you get a group of civilians together, it's, you know, egos, attitudes, you know, uh, that kind of stuff gets in the way. Yeah, but I will say that with, I have been in that situation where I've been in a raid team for years and when everybody is working, I mean, there, there was drama, but you also had people that you knew, they knew what to do and when to do it. And we might've gotten a lot of explanation on how to do things when we started a fight, but everybody knew that you needed to learn it and you had a part and here was your part. And it did make things go much easier. I mean, yeah, and like for instance, in the last raid time I was in, it was we didn't do any of these bosses, but like for the Argus fight, we probably would have made thirty or forty pulls on Argus just to do the first phase and wipe immediately afterwards until it was perfection every time. And that's tedious. <laughs> And we don't have that going on here. And I enjoy not having the tedium. Yes. And that's the difference between our team. I mean, we, we usually run 23 to 27 players each night. And they're not all the same players. The majority are. Um, but we have the capability of filling uh, probably every night. But people feel very relaxed about whether they show up or not. It's not a big deal. You know, if they don't show up, yeah. I mean, it is for the tanks. They they have to show up. <laughs> wait, wait. You know. Hey, I didn't sign that contract. Yeah, oh, yes. What? Yes. What? That was what? The tank. You didn't you didn't see that tanking clause? <laughs> oh, man. Oh, now I'm looking at it now. Firstborn, hey. <laughs> right? 
I'd be happy to get rid of my firstborn. <laughs> yeah, I'll trade you. <laughs> <laughs> Oop, there goes our other tank. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he just walked in the door when I said it too. So he's like, oh, you say that because I walked in the door. <laughs> uh, too funny. So, um, well, okay. I didn't get to ask the question because I was, I was kind of drawing on this whole, my intro where we, you know, <laughs> how I kind of threw not that our in best there. glory. <laughs> no, you know, how we didn't do this weekend. Yeah, it, it wasn't our best weekend, but it, was, it wasn't a bad weekend. We yeah. were still having fun. There was a yeah. lot of giggling and chat. Yep. And that's, oh, that's one of the things I like about this raid team. We, we can, you know, make fun and, and, you know, still still get some bosses well not this weekend but we can still get some bosses down we got a couple down but uh so anyway uh how is everybody this week <laughs> <laughs> not bad did we do anything exciting i'm other exhausted. than failed miserably <laughs> mm, gardening gardening Ooh. no yeah did like 100 miles on my motorcycle did the movie thing on sunday what'd you go ah. see uh, today we saw break in which there wasn't anything else out and the the plan was to go see show dogs but i've heard some really horrible horrible things about that movie and really didn't want to see it so uh because of storms theo couldn't see break in that he went to uh, saturday afternoon so uh, actually break in was actually a better choice it was it was a good movie all right yeah i uh i watched uh oh it's the uh, the seventeen ten train to Paris or something. Ooh, like that. that was good. I like yeah. that movie. Yeah, it was. I mean, that's it's kind of like that. There was a Navy SEALs movie that came out that they used the actual military people as the actors, and they mm -hmm. did the same thing in this one. Um, I'm impressed by that. Yeah, I was not. Oh, okay. I and I will it. straight up say. Um, most of the people in the military can't act. Well, well no, yeah. I mean that's the, that's part of what the, made the it so good fine, was that you know they're but, not faking it. But it's no, they were they were trying to act. Well, they were, <laughs> but you know what? You have to give them a little bit, you know, for their first time ever, and they had to carry the entire movie. And I see, and I, I'm okay with the story and honoring what they did, but I feel like the producers should have looked at the dailies from the first day and been like, uh, we need to hire somebody. <laughs> Let's change it up just a little, shall we? And yeah. I was impressed that it wasn't just the the army, uh, the military guys. There were the people that were the the civilians mm -hmm. on the were the were the real people. There was only one civilian, and that was the guy who first encountered them in the bathroom. The guy in the bathroom. He did not want to show his face, and, and he still hasn't done that. But everybody else that that they showed that had any kind of big part, the husband and the wife and the man that helped them after they caught the, the criminals and they were holding them down, those were all the real people too. Yeah. That well, was just I, like, wow. That, that's just, interesting. I mean, yeah. it's, a, it's a risk because you risk having people who can't act, but then there's it, – it's almost more like they're trying to make a documentary than a film. Yeah, and and that's the thing is it I don't know necessarily because you lived it you have to act, but you know they had a lot of backstory. I got really confused at the very beginning because I was like, I thought the kids were the kids of the people that did this. And I was like, oh. when are we getting to the main? And then it dawned on me. I was like, oh my god, those are the people as kids. Okay, I get it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I was a little confused to start with. But it could have been the fact that I was playing State of Decay 2 and I was killing zombies while trying to watch it too. So I did that all weekend. <laughs> <laughs> it's my new favorite game, I tell you. But, uh. um, yeah. So, so um, I don't know what else to say about our raid. It was, it was okay. It was there. Um, but, um, yeah. We Not our we collective finest hour? Well, okay, I shouldn't be so negative because we did progress. We did learn a lot. Um, nobody got frustrated, rage quit, anything like that. We did have fun. I mean, you know, there's there's positives to it. I, I think we'll do a lot better next weekend. That's my prediction. 
Um, yeah, I'd agree that this was a good learning weekend for a lot of the people that may or may not have been there when we got it down last week. And I will say from, from Darg and I, some of the chat that we were having, um, it is hard to stay focused and do 100% and be totally on top of everything when it's the same thing over and over again. So sometimes we're losing a little bit of focus, trying not to, but that can happen. Yeah. Yeah, you do. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it isn't fun wiping over and over, but it's a learning curve. Would it be worth taking a week and going back and doing a full clear? It if might. No, if for no other reason than to clear everybody's brain and palate? Well, I'm thinking, you know, Friday, I think we'll, we'll just, we'll start off with Argus since we have, we went through the, you know, the motions of getting the lockout for it and see how we do if we get really really close again three percent and so on then um we can throw it up for a vote for saturday to see if we want to keep you know i call it beating our heads against the wall (laughs) um because nobody likes to do that not not two days in a row anyway i mean i'd be even more depressed doing the podcast <laughs> <laughs> well we really didn't do it this weekend's rate of continuing rate of Antorus. <laughs> so um yeah we could do that we could we could you know just literally see what everybody wants to do i was just thinking of, you know changing it up a little bit plus yeah. we might get some gear for some people that could help out i you know well and you know there has been some rumblings now that we've got argus down we we want to do uh, you know bring in alts because some of the top geared people are not getting anything even off Argus, which I understand, but there are people that don't show up every weekend that still need gear from Argus and and uh, Agrimar. Yeah, I'm pretty mad at bringing in alts at this stage. Like we we were doing the Wednesday for for an alt run and people wanted to and there weren't a lot coming in. Um, but, uh, I'd rather, I'd rather maybe get a little more motion into what we're doing, um, than, you know, changing the whole thing around and everyone learning new roles. Sure. Yeah. I mean, I'll be honest. I, I'm at that point where I want to bring in an alt for like early fights, but then switch back to Dizzy for, you know, our progression if, for no other reason than to help out. Yeah. I, I, I get that, and so, what would be what would make more sense to, uh, to go Friday with uh, Argus, and then Saturday drop in halts, or maybe the other way around. I I think we should probably give it another week before we do anything with alts. Honestly, though. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Especially since we kind of talked about that at the end of last night's raid. Right. Well, and we've got this new uh, new mechanic or new uh, strategy we're going to try. So, you know, well, that's for Ar- or Agrimar, right? We should at least discuss it. Yeah, yeah. Well, we can try it. You know, I mean, we, you know, we can always go back and try it. So that's not a big deal. All right, well, the news that I had that I didn't want to talk about was, and I was hoping he'd be here, is that uh, Charity has, uh, because she's pregnant, she has uh, chose to bow out of uh, the Lions Pride Tavern until after her baby is born. And uh, we had Ant on as a special guest last week. He's a Mist Weaver monk, and uh, I was hoping he'd show up tonight. Uh, he is uh, going to take Charity's spot for the healing minute. But uh, his first official podcast that he's a member, he didn't show. <laughs> and we don't know why. <laughs> I know. I discorded him. I emailed him. I texted him. And I haven't got any response. Now, I don't know his work schedule. Um, and I can, I'll, I'll talk with him some more on that. Um, and it could just be that maybe because him and Tap work together, maybe Tap's got him on a motorcycle ride. I was going to blame Tap. I, that's what I was. That's where I was going with that. Let's just blame blame Tappuccino for that. <laughs> Tell her she can't have him. Yeah, she's she's got to let him go for the podcast. So uh, yeah, I put my feelers out last weekend um, of anybody that wanted to jump into charity spot and and uh, 
which was Tap's old spot, and Ant was the first one to uh, to come at me with that. So, yeah. So, be looking forward to it. We got a uh, uh, another healer, so we, we won't be losing that perspective. But um, and is a mistweaver. Yeah, a and I was a healer monk. for many years, and I just can't grasp mistweaver healing. Yeah. And is that where you have to hit things in order to power up to Apparently, heal? Apparently. That's see that sure. is so weird. <laughs> the idea of doing that. I don't I can't either. Yeah. The melee melee uh, healing. A melee healer, yeah. Well, melee. there's the uh what's the uh the dis- disciplined priest is that way. You have to do you know, you have to do DPS in order to Yeah, but that's your... only new. I I I used to play disc priest and it was all about bubbling, but I don't know about it now either. Yeah, no, I, I I played the only good healer, which was the uh, druid. So, it's well, I shouldn't say good, the easiest healer. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa! What? <laughs> it is. It's not, it's not the easiest. It's the, it's the most beginner friendly, but it's not the easiest. I I can play it and watch TV at the same time and keep the entire raid alive <laughs> Shh, don't tell people that oh 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 i oh because see that's why a pistol plays one too i haven't done it for a while though actually. no i, I haven't, know, I haven't I... been healing for a long time yeah i've just been you know that contract when when we first met a pistol he was our healer he wasn't our tank <laughs> actually i thought i started uh, on my mage because uh uh, you guys were heavy on uh, Andromeda, so oh was, yeah, uh, yeah. So yeah, we, we right. had uh, you had heals and uh, tanks plenty. So it was like a group that actually just needs DPS. All right. Yeah, that's right. I forgot about that. Yeah, then you switched to your healer. So yeah. Yeah. Way back when. <laughs> yeah, before we actually had an official guild. Um, I mean, my guild uh, is the Fellowship of the Thing, and uh, it would it consisted of four family members, well, five family members, and then uh, that was it. <laughs> yeah. But we had like a hundred plus tunes, <laughs> something like that. It was crazy. Um, and then uh, when we decided to start raiding is when we started, you know, we didn't require it. People were just like, hey, can I join your guild? And we're like, yeah, bring your tunes over. And now it's, geez, we must have 35 actual members with multiple tunes on the, in the guild. So it's, it's, it really took off. I was impressed. So uh, anybody got anything new they want to share uh, that they figured out or did? I know it was kind of boring because all we had last week was, I don't know, it was a Battlegrounds or something. I don't think anybody did that. Dark Moon Fair yeah. started up. Yeah, I'm working on that. I'm still trying to... I forgot that I needed to get that worked on so that I could get my Zeppelin. Oh, the Zeppelin. Yeah, so I have to go in every day because it's like, oh, shoot. Yeah, I, I can't have... do it just on Sunday. I need to do it every day. How many tickets do you got to have for that? A thousand. Yeah, and this this Lorelai is the one that has the most right now at four fifty two, but that's still <laughs> only four fifty two. So have you calculated out how many years it'll take? Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just trying to get through the end of uh, uh, two weeks, and then we're out of school. Oh, okay. that's yeah, just what I'm living for. <laughs> then I'll worry I, about it. I think everybody's looking forward to that. Mm. Oh yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I I'm taking part in a trade war right now. Are you? <laughs> yeah. I've been getting nasty grams from a couple of my competitors a couple of times a day in my mailbox. <laughs> oh, interesting. Oh, yeah. oh, no. I'm taking yeah. away into their profit margins. Darn. <laughs> well, you know, such is life. It, it, it keeps going forward regardless. But uh... Hey, it's an open market, and I'm taking my opening. There you go. Yeah, why not? All right. Well, um, we might end up with this podcast a little short tonight, but uh, I hear the music. It's time for Lorelai's Bet Battle Minute. (laughs) 
Welcome back, pet battlers. More news from the beta and a new pet. His name is Francois the Fabergé Egg. This pet is a reward for completing the 15th Norwington Equestrian and Hunt Festival, which was one of my favorite quests in the alpha, although it was bugged at the time. This pet will cost you 1 million gold, but don't be disheartened. You don't have to actually pay 1 million gold, but you'll need to have it in your inventory and you get to keep it. If you have less than a million gold, you'll be able to get the egg, but you won't be able to interact with Francois. Once he sees that you're wealthy enough to be deemed worthy of his friendship, you'll be able to put him in your battle stable. Blizzard's getting really creative with this pet. Francois' Fabergé egg is a reference to the highly expensive and ornate Fabergé eggs made for Tsar Alexander III of Russia. The hen egg was the first egg to be crafted from a foundation of gold. Its white enameled shell could be opened to reveal a yellow gold yolk, and this in turn could be opened to reveal a multicolored hen. Then the hen could be opened as well and contained a miniature diamond replica of the imperial crown. Thanks to Jeremy Fiesel and his team for digging deep and coming up with some amazing and creative new pets. The update for the number of new pets for BFA expansion has climbed to 120. This is mind-blowing. Legion started out with 94. New pet models have come out for the Island Expeditions, which is a 3x3 battle against an enemy faction, racing to collect the most treasures, or Azerite. Not sure if this is going to be PvP, but I'm probably going to give it a try, because there is a skeleton monkey that looks an awful lot like Pirates of the Caribbean. So keep uh, coming back and I'll keep you up with more news as it comes. Wow. Pirates, that would be cool. I love that skeleton monkey on Pirates. And he's got a little little patch on his eye, too. Oh, so his yeah. Name is Jack. Remember they yeah, named the, the monkey real Jack? Thing. Yeah, they named the monkey Jack. Yep. All right. Next up, we have. Want to sell my blue axe? It's got a sweet glow. It's not me a big guy. Oh, and MFG, what's this? Some Russians are spamming the trade channel ban them. Dizzy's unleashing the inner goblin. Ah, gold. You bring me both pleasure and so much pain. Last week, I made the bold statement that to be raid ready, I spent 20,000 gold on raid weekends. This week, I'll start you on your quest to never have to worry about gold again. Farming. Traditional farming is one of the easiest ways to make gold. The raw materials for mining, herbing, skinning, and fishing will always make money. There's a reason the goblins always say, time is money, friend. In this case, it is literal truth. The more time you spend farming, the more money you'll make. These materials are valuable for crafting by all the other professions, so there's always demand on the auction house. The current content materials will sell, but everybody else is also farming them, so the prices may be a little lower than you might expect. The newbie mats always are selling as well, and they're always very cheap because every time somebody rolls an alt, they'll start mining, and they'll mine a couple nodes around Goldshire, and that's it. I have found that if you find a group of materials, say Pandaria herbs, or the Cobra scales from Outland, you may be the only one farming them. So you get to set the price and control the market. On top of for everything else, never forget the power of lazy people. People will pay you for your time if you have something that they need. I have even made money by selling Dalaran cooking materials that you can buy in Nomi's kitchen. Yes, I buy the materials from the vendor, put them in the auction house, and make money. Because people don't want to take the time to go to Dalaran to buy them themselves. For all of you gatherers, I have a challenge for you. As you are flying around doing your world quests or leveling that alt for the umpteenth time, never run by a node. Gather that herb, mine that ore, or skin that wolf. Somebody will pay you for the time you spend doing it. Now go out there and get your farm on. Very good. Next up, our tank in address. What's wrong with tanking? What's wrong with tanking? What's wrong with tanking in a dress? What's wrong with tanking? What's wrong with tanking? What's wrong with tanking in a dress? This week's Come At Me A Tanking Minute. Are there holes in your armor? 
Yes, it's all about mitigation, active mitigation, cooldowns. We've talked about this many a time on uh, Come At Me. Uh, but sometimes, from time to time, weird stuff can go awry with your uh, tanking. Sometimes your active mitigation goes down, eh, you use a cooldown, and yet, if you're ro raiding heroic or beyond, sometimes when there's a big boss hit, some major uh, tank killing mechanic, you could go down. And sure enough, in our raid last week, that happened to Epistle a couple of different times, but both in one fight. So here's the, the long and skinny. What happened is I've actually been using one of my uh, self-mitigation cooldowns, Shield of the Righteous, to also do some DPS. So when we're trying to get in a hurry and knock down a, uh, a boss, uh, I like to try to get it past maybe a cut, uh, cut of a point where we're going to transition. Um, but I'm not the main tank at the time. I'm off tanking, getting ready to go back in. I might use one of those mitigations. The problem is, if I do that, I'm trading a little bit of DPS, not a lot from a tank's perspective, uh, to try to get, you know, get a little extra damage, but I'm trading off a little bit of mitigation later. And so a couple times during the fight, uh, once because I was getting too zealous, but another just the way the odds worked out, uh, I got one of those big hits and I went from full, full health to no health. Now, the odds of this working out just exactly badly like that are pretty small but when it happens twice in one fight people tend to notice so that's a case of using an active mitigation uh cooldown just a little too vigorously you can get away with that in dungeons you can get away with that in normal but you get to heroic and you just have to be that much pickier especially on the end bosses with that active mitigation so i gotta kind of move it out of my rotation and uh, just use it for mitigation only Sad, but true. But this is the truth uh, in raiding. Each boss might have a different kind of uh, uh, need to optimize your rotation. Sometimes you could get away with using one of your mitigations if it's if it turned off for more damage. Other times, not so much. So make sure you know your fight and you know the consequences of holes in your armor. And that's Attack Key Minute. Awesome. Next up, we have... It's WFN News, Warcraft Fafford News. The command center is up next at the Broken Shores with worthy champions and forces of the order. The weekly event on the Broken Isles is the Legion Dungeon event. Yay! Oh, nice. Something to do, yes. <laughs> WoW tokens dropped 1,000 gold this week, so they're still sitting about 205. Um, the Dark Moon Fair is going on all week, so you know I know Lorelai's over there, mm -hmm. getting all her tickets that she can. It's too bad you can't transfer those. Oh God, I would mine, have so right? many. No, yeah. I I already have. <laughs> <laughs> and if you haven't done this before, you must go do it. On Wednesday to Friday is the Thousand Boat Bash. Woohoo! Yeah, take a break and go sailing in the Thousand Needles. You know, I remember playing on the Thousand Needles when it was dirt. Yep. <laughs> I liked it better when it was dirt. I did too, yeah. yeah. Uh, now that it's all water, yeah, I, I don't know. But the, the boat bash is pretty cool. I did that last year. Um, and it, like I said, it's this Wednesday to Friday. So you go out there, you get a little boat, and you ride around in the lake and her I guess you'd call it a lake, Thousand Needles Lake. So yeah, that, there, that's there are fun. quests to do there too. Are they? Are yeah. but are they for one ten? Are they do it like the the other events? Uh, I did them last. Well, I, I don't know to be honest. I only did them on Lorelei last year to try it out. Yeah, I, I you know, I think well, they scale. I'm not one ten last that. year. Right. So. Yeah. Well, guys, um, unless somebody's got something they want to talk about, this is a really short podcast this week. We just... Uh... <laughs> it's our summer edition. Well, yeah. Uh, hey, it happens. When you, when, you only, when you only fight two bosses and you don't get either one down, there's not much to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I don't know about you guys, but you don't want to listen to our failures. You want to listen to our successes. <laughs> so uh -oh. we got doggies down and garage. 
<laughs> we even had a little bit of a hiccup on the dogs. We hadn't done those in such a long time. Oh, yeah, but we recovered fantastically. Yeah, they're not too bad. <laughs> I actually wondered if we weren't on Heroic when we did that, but then I guess that's how I, easy those that's, are. That's funny because I thought the same thing. I was like, well, no, we didn't leave the raid. We just ran down and did the dogs. So <laughs> it wasn't like we left and came back in. But, yeah, well, that just goes to show you. Um, you know, it was funny. I was looking at the gear score. The average gear score for our entire raid is 362.5, which is yeah, pretty good. Pretty nice. A 9? 62.5? Yeah. 9, yeah. Because 3. Because 3. <laughs> like, would be what? like Pandaria. I was thinking that you weren't wearing your like, armor. <laughs> did, I, did I really say that right? No, I don't think I did. Yeah, 962.5. I was impressed. So that that's a lot of high gear people. And I'm at nine sixty two, so I am exactly average. Uh, yeah, that's where I'm, I'm, I'm only, at nine sixty one. I'm only nine fifty nine. <laughs> I gotta I gotta look back. Uh, yeah, and I apologize and I'm gonna do it on the podcast. My DPS sucked this weekend <laughs> because I think I still have Fury stuff going on. I mean arm stuff going on. And I don't know what was happening to me the, this weekend. Yeah, well you know, you Every time I, I I find that every time I switch, like that's why I like staying with Beastmaster. Yeah. Because if I switch, then it's a whole new rotation setup and different keys and you know and I, and then I I think back, why did I switch? Because I was bored. Because I was doing it so well. I'm gonna go back and just redo the one I did before. So well, uh, Baffer, we need to have a talk about your so well. <laughs> okay, better than before. <laughs> I don't do too uh -huh. bad. I'm in the middle of the pack. I, I bumped up there. I saw, I looked at the meters one time during the fight, and I was in second. So I was like, you know, I mean, it's bursting. For like a second. <laughs> well, yeah, but I stay an average of eight, anywhere from six to eight right in there overall. All right, Fafford, I have the, the number one improvement for your DPS. <laughs> Switch from Beastmaster Hunter? No, 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 no. Stop being the token sacrifice. Oh, oh, okay. Well, somebody has to do it. I, you know, I, uh, this is the first time that I've had mommy actually do it for for Argus, where she was collecting the balls so we could get Titan Forged. Which see, you know, we need to switch you and mommy out. <laughs> well, I was gonna uh, say, and then it will, everything will feel right again. On on Argus, I'm I'm skipping over that. On Argus. <laughs> I didn't get to acknowledge. Um, why did we change up when we did uh, Hero? D can anybody explain that? Do you know why? Uh, why we stopped doing it? Because we beginning? did it. We did it. The, the week we got it down, we did it right at the very beginning, and we got a second one in by the end of the fight, and we tightened oh, forged I know what twice. It, I think I know what it was. But I don't um, remember if we tightened forged twice. I didn't look at the logs. Did we tighten forge twice? In our fights? I have no idea. Yeah, I don't know. I know we did Titan Forge because I heard people call it out, but I never heard the second time we Titan Forge. So, um, from what I understand, we were trying to get it a, the hero a little earlier in the fourth phase because people were going down, and so it wasn't benefiting enough people. Oh, well, that could be, but I don't know. I just try to compare it to the time we. At got the same it down. time, we've been using it at at the pull to get us through the first phase faster so we have to worry about the cone of death less yeah well I noticed that uh, I mean I, I made it through I think all but once I made it through the first phase which is awesome and the reason I didn't is because I had uh, I had to go back for the circle and everybody that had it before me were like piled right behind the group so I had to go further back to drop mine which torqued me because then I had to run sideways faster and I didn't make it <laughs> I even uh, bubbled turtle will save you from that normally I, I yeah but I had, I had turtled before so it was on cooldown so because I'd gotten it a couple of times during that one but every other poll I made it through just fine it was just once so I'm feeling more confident with that. That's why I say I, I really think it's just a matter of, of us getting our rhythm. Um, let's just do predictions. What do you think? You think we're going to get Argus down, Abyssal? Yeah. Lorelai, yeah? 
Oh, Def, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to jump in like no, that. No, no, no problem. Uh, no, I, I do. I mean, we're going to get it down. I think we just, as Dizzy said, we were short people on Friday, so we didn't have as much, we didn't have any time really Friday to, to get into it very much. And I'm not sure what happened Saturday. I think, I don't know if people were just kind of, uh, their little balloon was popped or something, but I, we'll get it. Not hopefully next weekend. Yeah. I feel like we are going to get it because if we're doing it on a Friday, we're having a totally different raid composition than we were stumbling on on Saturday. Very true. And then that would actually determine whether it is raid composition that was causing the problem. Well, it's been my experience. That's usually the cause. Probably you should be getting down on Saturday, though. And so that's the composition I think that's been successful. So um, yeah, it feels to missing... me... We're missing it's a true. Heavy it is Saturday. true. Uh, yeah, both. I mean, from healing and and DPS, and I think um, it's one of those things where we need to build that capacity again, and so we're a few weeks back from where we were, um, and so we, yeah, I feel like we're we have to build back up again to get to that level. Yeah, I think you're but right. I think we'll get it this week. Okay. And wh I'm sorry, Epistle, what did you, what was your prediction? You think we'll get it? Uh, it might be a couple of weeks. Um, there was, um, uh, there's just a few technical things that people are getting overloaded in at the end. Um, and so people are still standing in, um, in the white swirlies and that's getting, um, uh, that's getting us killed, right? I think that it's the incoming damage that people aren't avoiding, um, avoidable damage and, and, uh, we don't have the heals to get through that. So, um, unless we get more, more healing oomph to compensate for those errors, we have to not have those errors. And see, with with as many times as people said, stop standing in the swirlies. I wonder if they understand where the swirlies are at or what they look like, because I I was not seeing as many people as normal standing in. I mean, I, I remember seeing. You know, two DPS and a healer stand there, and three of the swirlies right down on top of them, and they just stood there. But, you know, normal, you can get through it that way, but not on heroic. Lots of, um, uh, lots of tunnel vision going on, I think. Yeah. Pe people getting overwhelmed with everything that's going on, and so they're not as on the ball for all the fine detail work that needs to be done. Now, do we get the swirlies based on the number of people standing in one place? I don't think so. I think it, it, it starts off slower because there's not as many. And then it, as it gets closer in the fourth phase to be in at the end, there's a ton of them. Oh, yeah, because I kept seeing like groups of four in melee. But one of the times I was dead, I noticed that range started creeping up farther and farther, closer and closer to the boss. And I was like, oh, it's almost like a little wave, <laughs> you know, a couple of hits and then four steps forward and a couple of, well, like, oh, is that doing it? Because we were getting a lot of them in melee. And that may have been because, you know, if the heels went down, they're getting closer to where melee's at because, and the tanks, because they know the tanks are getting heels. So if they're wanting heels, I mean, I kind of tend to do that too. If if I'm clear out there and I see my health dropping, I mean, it did it a couple of times, right? I popped my cooldown for health and I popped a soul stone uh, at the same time, just to get my health back up. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I don't know. I I I I'm agreement with everybody, but epistle. I think we'll get it down. <laughs> <laughs> I think we'll get it down next weekend. I really do. I think people are gonna, you know, this was a this was a failed weekend, and I think that's gonna really kick them in the tush. But we had so. good things going on. I will have to give a big shout out to the healers who were uh, helping the people who got soul burst uh, over in the in the sides in the back, the side in the back. That they were doing a great job keeping people up. Well, except when I went the first oh. real pull, I went back there. I was oh, low on what? health. I was low on health when I got there. Yeah, and I I forgot to turtle. I got back there. I was like, why didn't I turtle? Oh. <laughs> If I would have, I would have survived. Um, but then I got, you know, every time I got it after that, I'd look before I went to Turtle. If I was at full health, I was fine. But if I was down, 
anywhere. BFA, you're at half health. You're not going to make it. Yeah, you're not going to make it. So, but all right, guys. Well, I appreciate you coming. I thank all the fans for listening. It's a little short, not too much. We're about 10 minutes shorter than we normally go. We're just, you know, we're down a person for talking and, and uh, I think we're all depressed. I know I am. <laughs> <laughs> I just, you know, I mean, it, it really takes it out of you when you, you're fighting and fighting and wipe. Baffert, fighting and fighting and wipe. Do you, do you need to talk to somebody about your depression? <laughs> no, no. I just have Because you should talk to mommy about it. No, no. She has ping no, pong she'll balls. she'll laugh. <laughs> that's yeah, he was getting hit with ping pong balls. That, that, that's, that has got to be my favorite part of the raid lately is that fact that we can get Mummy to throw <laughs> ping pong balls at Fafford with like remote control. That's just so incredible. Well, okay, until somebody, and I won't say who they are, suggested marbles, that's wrong. <laughs> I don't know anything about the marbles, but I suggested the ping pong balls to Mummy. I know two you weeks did. Ago. I know. And we, we, we go to the. Uh, uh, Oh, they're a hundred for like six bucks on Amazon. Yeah, no, we got them at the uh, sporting goods store. We went there. I don't remember why we even went there. Oh, she wanted a little tiny pocket knife. And, and so we went there balls. and yeah, exactly. And we're walking by all the toys and she turns and she goes into the toy aisle. I'm like, what the heck are you doing? You don't look at toys and in this sporting goods they are like stupid toys. And she grabs a package of ping pong balls. I'm like, they're just tiny things. They're about half the size of a regular ping pong ball. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> so for those of you, <laughs> the fans who don't know, she sits above me when we play on the second floor, and it's kind of an open railing. And <laughs> if I make a snide comment, she'll throw – she used to throw candy, which was great, because then I could have something to eat while I was raiding, but – yeah, uh, but hey, ping pong balls I've just hurt less. I've just made a discovery though. Did you know that Amazon stocks um, ping pong ball shooters? So like little oh. toy guns with ping pong balls on it. Yes. Oh, and, oh man, and, she had that. And and you can and you can ship them to people and you who you want back. to. So uh, you're saying you're gonna ship me one so I can shoot back? Is that what you're no, saying? No, no, I'm not gonna. <laughs> why would I ship one to you? <laughs> <laughs> I, I think it's a. I think it's whoever get, opens the package first wins though. Oh, okay. <laughs> we should take label any, it to Durag. Take, it, take any trips out of town soon? <laughs> no. Um, we're, uh, we actually, that's what we did on Saturday. That's why there wasn't much for me that I said, yeah, I did something exciting. Um, we are working on my daughter's bathroom. Uh, we built her a new room a few years ago, and, and she has a bathroom off to the side, but we just hadn't had the money to, to do it. And uh, we finally got that all saved up. And so we started. We did all the electrical wiring on Saturday. And uh, my daughter got to break the concrete underneath the shower drain and nice. dig out all the gravel so I could hook the drain up for the shower pan. <laughs> she was like, she had to have her little work gloves on and little little uh, safety glasses. And then she put a bandana over over her mouth and nose because the dust from the gravel it was so cute i wish i would have got a picture your, your daughter is way different than my daughter because mine would have none of that oh yeah she just she dove right in there <laughs> i didn't tell her that when i first opened it up that there were spiders in there but i kind of smushed them with the hammer as i was opening it up but I, <laughs> otherwise she wouldn't have anything to do with it so and she doesn't listen to the podcast so she'll never find out ah uh, spiders <laughs> I spent a good hour today laughing at my daughter because a little tiny house spider was on the ceiling and it was chasing her, apparently. Nice. You know, from the ceiling. Yeah, from the ceiling, yeah. Oh, I know, I used to get the, the scream and I'd run in there and she's like, there's a spider that ran across my keyboard. I'm like, well, kill it! That's why I you keep know? a can of raid nearby at all times. It catches mosquitoes, what's the problem? Right? That's what I say. Yeah, we don't have a mosquito problem. We have a bird problem. And the spiders aren't big enough to take the birds out. So. <laughs> All right, guys. We're going to call it. Uh, that's an episode. Uh, I want to thank Charm for all of her beautiful music. Please go visit her website and her YouTube channel. The links are in the description below. Um, Vincent Moretto for Heavy Metal Tavern music at the beginning. And uh, thanks, everybody, for showing up tonight. Sure. Pleasure as always.
Attack immediate. Attack immediate. Attack immediate. The newbie mats always are selling as well, and they're always very cheap because every time somebody rolls an alt, they'll start mining, and they'll mine a couple nodes around Goldshire, and that's it. All right. Sorry, I wasn't done. Oh. <laughs> I, I was failing to talk again. Dramatic pause.